Welcome back everyone to section number six. Again, this is implicit differentiation and in this video we want to tackle some more examples. All right, so really quick remark before we get into this, the claim is in the last video we saw an example of how the kind of the chain rule crept into these implicit differentiation problems. The claim is we need to be careful, right? Uh, when you're applying the power of the product, the quotient rule and chain rules all correctly, kind of these extra whys are gonna be a little bit confusing. And so hopefully in this video, you'll start to see some of the techniques that we need to use in order to apply these things correctly when we have equations with X's and Y's sprinkled all throughout. Okay, so example 6.4, first of all, I'd like to consider this curve. And notice we have x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 6xy. This really doesn't look like I could solve it for y equals, right? This looks like, oof, very messy. But still, I want to be able to figure out the derivative, dy dx. Remember, this is another notation, Leibniz notation for y prime, right? I want to figure out the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, and so just like in our last video, well, this is a little bit more complicated now. I would like to take the derivative across both sides of the equation, and then I'm going to use algebra to solve for y prime, or dy dx. So in this case, for this example, I know in the, the previous video I used y prime, I'm going to go ahead and use dy dx just so that we can get used to visualizing both of these things, right? So okay, let's get to it. And in fact, I find it's quite useful if I give you guys a chance to try it first. So please pause the video, take 30 seconds, get as far as you can, uh, and then I'll explain right in full detail uh, how to take the derivative of this thing. But at least try to take the derivative on both sides and then we'll do the algebra bit together. All right, pause the video. All right, nothing happened. <laughs> uh, but let's go over the solution to this, right? So, okay. I want to take the derivative across both sides thing here. Well, first of all, the derivative of x cubed, well, that's 3x squared. This is something that we've taken the derivative of quite a lot. And again, technically, if you wanted to use the chain rule, right, this would be times 1 because the derivative of x is just 1, especially when you're doing the derivative with respect to x. Now, something more complicated, something that we haven't dealt with so much is this y cubed. So the claim is, well, we need to use the chain rule. So we're going to take the derivative of the outside, and the outside is, well, stuff's being raised to the cube power, right, to the third power. So the three's going to come down. We're going to reduce our power by one. But now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. And again, if you feel more comfortable using the y prime notation, you can certainly do that. All right, so that's the derivative of the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we'll notice that I have a product of two functions. I'm going to go ahead and group this together. 6x is one function, y is the second function. So I'm going to use the product rule. So I'm going to do the derivative of the first. So that's going to be 6 times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second and the derivative of y again is y prime or dy dx. All right, so now you can see that you have some dy dx's kind of scattered throughout this. We would like to solve for that. So now I need to use algebra to kind of rearrange this and solve for dy dx. And the way that we're going to do this is, first of all, getting all of the dy dx's on the same side uh, and everything without a dy dx on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and write 3y squared times dy dx minus 6x dy dx. So that is, I kept this one here on this side, and then I subtracted the 6x dy dx from both sides. The 6y I'm going to leave on this side, and then I'm going to go ahead and subtract over the 3x squared. So this is going to be minus 3x squared. So now I have all the dy dx's on one side and everything without dy dx's on the other side. And the idea here is that now I can factor out a dy dx, right? All of these terms have a dy dx in them, so I can factor that out from both sides. Okay, sorry, I mean just factor it out from both terms. Okay, now what's left over? Well, in the first term, I'll have a 3y squared, and in the second term, I'll have a 6x. 
Okay, remember this is being multiplied by this, and my goal is to solve for dy dx. So again, dy dx, and this will be equal to, well, in order to undo multiplication, right, I need to employ division, right? So I'm going to divide by this 3y squared minus 6x on both sides. So this will give me 6y minus 3x squared divided by 3y squared minus 6x. And there we go, that is my final answer. You could spend a second or so, you know, you could factor out a three from both the top and bottom and kind of simplify a little bit. Actually, let's do that, especially because we do have uh, another piece coming up. So if I was to factor out a three from the top and the bottom and simplify, right, this three, the six would become a two, this three would go away and the six would become a two. And so we'd have two y minus x squared over y squared minus 2x. So that's maybe a little bit more simplified and a little nicer looking. Either way though, if you gave me this answer on a quiz or an exam, I would give you 100%. Okay, moving on, find an equation of the tangent line at the point 3, 3. Well, an equation for a any line, right, we know looks like y minus some y point is equal to a slope times x minus some x point. And we'll notice you've been given an x point and a y point, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do y minus 3 is equal to some slope times x minus the x point. Also happens to be 3 in this case. Okay, so the only question that I have remaining is, well, what should this slope be? Well, it is a tangent line, right? So we want the slope to be the derivative at this 3, 3. So, well, here's a derivative equation, right, dy dx or y prime. And so all I need to do is just plug in 3, 3 into this formula up here. So dy dx evaluated at 3, 3. This is going to give us 2 times 3 minus 3 squared over 3 squared minus 2 times 3. So I'll write 6 there. So, okay, 6 minus 9 will be negative 3, over 9 minus 6 will be positive 3, so therefore the slope here is negative 1. So, okay, y minus 3 is equal to negative 1 times x minus 3. I personally like answers to be written like this because it's very easy for me to tell what is the point uh, 3, 3, and what is the slope. Now, I know... Uh, Sometimes it's nice to simplify down to y equals. So let's go ahead and do that really quick just to show both answers. So I'm going to go ahead. y minus 3 is equal to negative x plus 3. Add the uh, 3 to both sides. So I get y is equal to negative x plus 6. So this is the other way that we could write the answer. And in fact, now is a good time, actually. Uh, I want to pull up a Desmos right, application, and let's look at this curve. Let's see what we're actually doing here. And so, okay, let me pull this up. I think I have it all ready to go. Yes. So you can see that you can do x cubed plus y cubed equals 6xy. It doesn't have to be y equals in Desmos, which is very nice. And so we get this kind of loop-de-loop -loop thing, right? So this is certainly not a function. Uh, of, for y in terms of x, right? Because it doesn't pass this vertical line test, right? This loop-de-loop -loop, mm, makes it difficult. And so, okay, we wanted to figure out a derivative equation, and then particularly we wanted the tangent line at 3, 3. So if I go ahead and plot the point 3, 3, you can see it's on the curve. That's a good sign. And then we came up with a formula. Let's go back here and make sure I don't make a mistake. So the formula for the tangent line, we can verify and make sure this is right, is y equals negative x plus 6. So let's go ahead and plot that. y equals negative x plus 6. And we can see indeed that it does go through this point, and it just barely skims the graph, right? So this indeed does look like exactly what we think of as a tangent line. All right, so, so far we're on a good track. And so the last question that it has for us, at what point in the first quadrant is the tangent line horizontal? Ah, okay. So if I go back to this picture really quick, it does seem like somewhere here, maybe between 2 and 3, right, there's a place where the tangent line would be perfectly horizontal. If I was guessing, I'd say at 2.5, 
but it could be at you know 2.53 or you know 2.6 or something like this. So we're going to use a little bit of math to figure this out. But yeah, somewhere between two and three, it looks like the tangent line would be horizontal, right? And this is in the first quadrant, right? Positive x, positive y. Okay, let's go ahead and try to figure that out. Well, remember, right, a tangent line being horizontal, tangent line, again, is slope. So when we want the slope, well, horizontal would be when the slope is equal to zero. So I want the slope equal to zero. Remember, the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. It's this dy dx business, and I would like dy dx to be equal to zero. Okay, well, up here we have a formula for dy dx, right? So dy dx is supposed to be equal to this 2y minus x squared over y squared minus 2x. So this should be equal to zero, right? if I want the tangent line to be horizontal. So, okay, let's go ahead and multiply through by the denominator. Remember, zero times anything is just zero, so I'm gonna get two y minus x squared is equal to zero. Okay, let's go ahead and rearrange. And so continuing to solve, I can rearrange for two y is equal to x squared, and finally we get y is equal to x squared over two. Huh, I wonder what happened there. Okay, there we are. So we have y equals x squared over 2. We pause here for a second, right, because this doesn't give us, you know, an explicit answer. It doesn't say x has to be this, y has to be this. We have a way to relate x's and y's together, but I can't solve for them. I need another way to relate x's and y's together in order to actually be able to solve, right? I have two unknowns. I need two equations, right? So this is going to be sort of a system of equations sort of deal. So my other equation that relates x's and y's together is back up here, right? The equation for the curve. So x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 6xy. So let me go ahead and write that down. x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 6xy. And now I have a way to kind of replace all of my y's. And I'll replace them with x squared over 2. So, okay, so x cubed, instead of y here, I'm going to do x squared over 2. That's all going to be cubed, is equal to 6x, and instead of y, I'm going to do x squared over 2. And now it's algebra time, right? So let's continue. We're going to have x cubed plus x to the 6th over 8, right? Because I need to cube both of these. And that's going to be equal to 3x cubed. Okay, now notice that all of these have at least an x cubed in them. So I'm going to divide through by x cubed, and the main reason I can do this is because I know I'm in the first quadrant, right? x is not going to be equal to 0. x has to be something bigger than 0, right? Because anytime you divide, you have, you know, especially with variables and stuff, you have to be worried that you're dividing by 0. So, okay, I'm not dividing by 0 because, again, x has to be positive. So I'm going to divide through by x cubed. So this is going to be 1 plus x cubed over 8 is equal to 3. All right, this is starting to look a little bit more reasonable, right? So let's go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides, and I'll get x cubed over 8 is equal to 2, which gives me x cubed is equal to 16, and so finally we get x is equal to the cube root of 16. Now, interestingly enough, right, if you plug this into your calculator or something, you'll get that this is 2.5198, Eight, and it keeps going forever, right? But the main thing is that it's not exactly 2.5, right? If we had just, you know, used the graph and guessed, we would have said 2.5, but it actually it's something more complicated than that. It's actually uh, the cube root of 16. All right, and now in order to f finalize, right, this uh, part, right, we need to go back and make sure that we're answering the question that was given to us, right? It asks at what point, right? And points have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So I have the x-coordinate now. I need to get the y-coordinate. So in order to get the y-coordinate, well, here's a way, right? This is a way, probably the easiest one that relates, is, relates our x's and y's together. So in this case, we're going to have y is going to be equal to this cube root of 16 squared. So the cube root of 16 squared over 2. And now just to verify this, let's go back to our picture and we can see that I've actually already sketched it for us. So right, the cube root of 16 is the same thing as 16 to the one third power. And likewise, 
the cube root of 16 squared is going to be 16 to the 2 thirds power. And so you can see when I plot this nice purple point right here, well, first of all, it's on the curve, and it does indeed look like that at this point, the tangent line would be horizontal. And so this is a nice way, again, to verify our work. All right, and so we have this first problem down. Uh, again, this was a pretty complicated one, as we saw here. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter one. I'd like to use implicit differentiation to find the equation of the tangent line for this curve. The curve is a little bit more complicated at the point pi over 2 comma pi over 4. All right, well, just as before, right, use implicit differentiation. We want to take the derivative on both sides of this equation. But actually, before we even get into that, uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, we can graph this, just like we did the other one. And the graph is pretty intense. This is what it looks like right here. So again, this is y sine of 2x times x cosine of 2y. And I plotted the point here, pi over 2 comma pi over 4. And this is what it looks like. So you can see this is definitely not a function. Doesn't pass the horizontal line test, the vertical line test, anything like this. There's no way to make this either a function y in terms of x or an x in terms of y. Right? So OK, this is quite extreme. But still, if we zoom in far enough, we can see at this point, if we kind of isolate it all, we say that, OK, well, I should be able to figure out the tangent line to this curve at this point, right? It looks like it's negative. Maybe it's around negative a half or something like that. I should be able to figure it out. So OK, let's use di implicit differentiation to do just that. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to use my y prime notation in this one. Again, you can use dy dx if you feel more comfortable with that. So let's go through and see what we have here. Let me rewrite this once, uh, just to be very explicit about all the operations that are involved here. So first of all, we have y times sine, and inside of the sine we have 2x. And then on the other side, we have x times cosine, and inside of the cosine is 2y. And so we can see that we're going to have a product rule on both sides. And then also, inside of the sine and inside of the cosine, it's not just normal old x or normal old y, right? We have 2x and 2y, so we're going to need to have the chain rule. All right, but the outermost thing here is that we have multiplication, right? So I'm going to be thinking about product rule. So let's use the product rule on the left-hand side. So I'm going to have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of sine is cosine of 2x. Remember, leave that inside alone. So this is the derivative of the outside. Leave the inside alone times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 2x is going to be 2. OK, that's the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the derivative of the first x, which is 1, times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. Leave that inside alone. Then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And so the derivative of 2y, well, again, 2 is along for the ride. It's a constant. But the derivative of y is y prime. All right, so that is my implicit differentiation. That's really the new stuff here. And now I want to go ahead and solve for this y prime. And so actually, in this case, I want to show you, I want to demonstrate a little bit of a different technique. In this previous one, we had to solve for uh, dy dx or y prime first. And then we use that equation to go ahead and figure out the equation of the tangent line. If you just want the equation of the tangent line and you don't care about finding dy dx, the general derivative uh, formula, then it turns out there's a little bit nicer of a way, right? So instead of solving for y prime first, or dy dx, and then plugging in the point, the claim is that it's a little bit nicer if you plug in this point now, right? Because again, we don't want the general formula for dy dx. So let's go ahead and plug in this point now. And this will make life a lot easier. All right, so y prime times sine of 2 times x. Well, 2 times x, well, x value is pi over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in pi over 2. Plus y, y was pi over 4 at this point, times the cosine of 2x. So that's 2 times pi over 2 times 2. On the right-hand side, well, 1 times anything is anything. So I'm going to have cosine of 2 times y, which is pi over 4, 
plus x, which is pi over 2, times negative sine of 2y, so 2 times pi over 4, times 2y prime. And again, my goal is to solve for y prime here, but now notice that everything except for the y prime has gone away, right? We've replaced the x's and the y's with this specific point. All right, let's take a line to simplify. y prime times sine of pi plus, and let me combine this 2 and this pi over 4 to just pi over 2 times cosine of pi is equal to cosine of pi over 2. And then let's see, we have a minus sign, and then this 2 on bottom and this 2 on top kind of cancel out very nicely. So this is going to be negative pi sine of, and this 2 and this 4 cancel a little bit, so I get pi over 2. All right, now we have to be good friends with our unit circle here in this class, right? So let's go ahead, sine of pi we know is going to be 0. So, okay, y prime times 0, that's going to be 0. Very nice. Uh, cosine of pi, that's going to be negative 1. So this is going to be pi over 2 times negative 1. Cosine of pi over 2, though, all right, well, that's going to be 0. And then minus, oh, sorry, I forgot my y prime back here. Or maybe I wrote it and it disappeared. I don't know. There we go. Sorry about that. And then we have minus pi and sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1 times y prime. All right, and this looks way nicer, right? So let's go ahead and simplify it one more time. We have pi over 2, negative pi over 2, is equal to negative pi y prime. We can divide by this negative pi on both sides, and we get that y prime is equal to positive 1 half in this case. So again, the slope of the tangent line at this value, at this pi over 2 comma pi over 4, is 1 half. We want to find an equation for the tangent line, right? We want to make sure that we answer our question. So the equation for the tangent line, well, just as before, it's going to be y minus the y point, pi over 4, is equal to the slope, which we just figured out is 1 half, times x minus the x point. And let's verify it on our graph. So let's go ahead and graph y minus pi over 4 is equal to 1 half times x minus the x point, pi over 2. And we can see that it goes through this point and it just barely skims, right? It seems tangent, so indeed, I can't believe I guessed it. Uh, but yeah, the uh, slope here is 1 half, right? And again, this comes from a very crazy function, but even though it's really, you know, this horrible, complicated thing, we can still solve for what is the slope at a particular point, right, thanks to this idea of implicit differentiation. All right, so that is it for 2.6. We're going to use this a lot in our next section, 2.8. We're going to be implicit differentiating left and right everywhere. So stay tuned. I'll see you then.